In this statics video, you will learn how to solve rigid body equilibrium problems. If you're using the Hibbler textbook, this content is going to be found in chapter 5. I'm going to draw free body diagrams for six very different looking problems, but you'll see that the process to set up the equations of equilibrium actually works out the same way for all six cases. Your goal as you watch this video should be to focus on what each of these six problems have in common with each other, not the differences between them. And the main similarity that you'll find is that no matter how complex the machine looks, you'll never have more than three unknowns in a single problem in this section. It is of course possible to create problems with more than three reaction forces, but those would need to be modeled as deformable bodies in order to solve, and you'll do that in a follow-up course, Mechanics of Materials. For all six problems, I'm gonna use the same three steps. Step number one is gonna to be to draw the free body diagram, emphasis on the word free. Since you're removing the part from all of its supports and replacing those support connections with reaction forces. Step number two is gonna to be to write out your equations of equilibrium. This is your sum of forces in the X direction equals zero, sum of forces in the Y direction equals zero, and sum of moments about any point you choose will also equal zero. And these three equations are why you can only have up to three unknowns per problem. And the final step is going to be just to solve. To save time, I'm not going to get all the way to a numerical answer for each of these examples, but I will describe the sequence of which equations I would use first, second, and third in order to solve for all unknowns. We've got six rigid body equilibrium problems, and we're going to do all of the engineering setup and none of the time-wasting math. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. While getting good grades is important and having a high GPA can help you land more job interviews, in order to win the interview and win the job, you're going to need to take advantage of all the professional development opportunities you can along the way. So do well in classes, but also make sure you're participating in research projects and competition teams so you can be the strongest job applicant you can when you graduate. This is the simplest looking problem we're going to look at all day, but every problem is going to be solved the same way. Draw the free body diagram, write down the system of equations, and then we'll discuss which order the equations would be used in order to solve for all of the unknowns. When drawing the free body diagram for this problem, one of the first parts was to replace the distributed load. In that case, I decided to split this up into two different triangles instead of just one large triangle. And the centroid for each of these triangles is gonna be one third of the base, but closer to the tall side. So that's why I located them uh, that one meter away from the center. And then the area of a triangle one half base times height for the magnitude. As I was writing down the moment equation, my initial instinct was to sum moments about point B which would cancel out those two forces, FBX and FBY, and then FA would be my only unknown. But on second glance, I decided to take moments about FA, which would cancel out FA, which is at a diagonal, which makes it a little bit more complex, but still cancels out FB as well, since FB, even though it's on the other side of the beam, does point horizontally across and also intersects at point A. So my sequence for solving this problem numerically would be to first uh, solve for FBY using the moment equation, then plug that into the sum of forces in Y equation, which allow me to solve for FA. And then I can plug FA into the X direction equation and solve for FBX. So this is one of the simpler, more straightforward problems in this chapter, but you'll see in all the follow-up problems, the solution style is gonna be exactly the same. This problem looks a little bit more complex than the last one because of the rope, but since tension on both sides of the rope will be equal to each other, we'll still end up with just three unknowns for this problem, not four.
The most common mistake I would expect to see for this problem would be to call the two tensions separate forces. If you made that mistake, you would end up with four unknowns and only three equations, so you would not be able to actually solve this problem. So to actually finish and get the final answers, I would use the moment equation, since it only has one unknown, to find t, be able to plug that back into the y direction equation to solve for fay, and also be able to solve it into the x direction equation to solve for fax. If you're learning something from this video, please take a moment and hit the thumbs up button right below the video. It really does help out the channel a lot. On to the third problem. It's problems like these where a lot of engineering students decide to just nope on out. It just looks so complex you can't figure out even what you're trying to find. So when you see a complicated machine problem like this, just keep in mind there can only be three unknowns. So first try to find the relevant free body so that you can ignore everything else. So I'm gonna split this solution up into two pieces. The first thing I said was to identify your free body so that you can ignore everything else. And in the picture, that's just this rectangular piece right there with the spring pulling down and then this section at A pulling down and everything down here can be completely ignored. So after trying the free body diagram, the problem doesn't actually ask for any of the forces at the pin, only the spring. So we're able to solve this with just one equation, just using a moment at the pin in order to cancel out those forces. The second half of this problem uses the second drawing on the right, where now the bar is in a horizontal position. So I'm gonna make a second drawing to help answer the second part of this question. To answer part B of this problem, I drew both positions of that bar overlapping each other. So you can see the change in distance for the spring. Basically in state two, it is less stretched than before. And you can use that change in distance to find the change in force. And then your final answer for part B is gonna be your answer from part A minus this change in force due to the change in length of the spring. For number four, we introduce a torsional spring. It's impossible to solve a problem like cosine theta equals theta using algebra. These have to be solved graphically, numerically. There are a lot of different methods, but regular algebra won't work. And so the most common mistake I see on questions like this is that students try to carry forward through the algebra and then make algebra mistakes that allow them to get to an answer. So one thing to keep in mind as you're solving your engineering homework problems is not every problem has an algebraic solution some of them you will have to solve numerically. For a test, you wouldn't have access to a computer or a solver, so these only make sense to ask on homework questions, not on test questions. But just keep in mind, for your problems, if you have something that looks like it can't be solved, it might be intended for you to use a computer or a graphing resource to find the answer. Again, another very complex looking machine, but as you create your free body, and remove all of the connections, you'll see that that teal colored piece of metal is essentially just a horizontal beam like some of the simpler problems we've already done. For this problem, the most common mistake would probably be in the free body diagram. For complex machines, sometimes it's hard to actually separate the free body and actually include extra parts that are unnecessary 
and that can change dimensions, lengths, number of unknowns. But if you're able to recognize that this teal piece is the free body diagram and that kind of everything above up there is irrelevant, then that's a big step towards starting this problem correctly. So to actually finish this problem, to get to a final answer, you'll see for the moments, I chose point D um, as my location, since FD gets canceled out, but also since FBX also points towards FD, that one will also cancel out as well. And I can solve for FBY in just one step. You could have also done a moment equation at point B and solved for FD in this step by itself. And either way, I'm gonna plug this back into the Y direction equation, which would allow me to solve for FD. And I can plug that then into the X direction equation and solve for FBX. All right, last problem. So the sad smiley face shows you that there's no forces in the x direction on this problem, so we can't actually use that as an equation of equilibrium to help us. And the reason that's a problem is that we have three unknowns in the moment and y direction equation. In order to solve this problem, we're gonna to have to create a separate equation using those change in lengths due to the spring in order to relate the forces to the angle. And so that's why I drew the triangle over on the drawing to the right hand side. There's really two ways to solve this. One is gonna to be to use an approximation and then the other is gonna to be to solve exactly. If you just wanna find an approximation, you could assume that the angle is gonna be very small. When you make the small angle approximation, you're assuming that cosine of theta is equal to one. And what that does is that removes this unknown from your moment equation and allows you to solve for FB directly. You can then plug that into your Y direction equation to solve for FA. And then you can solve both of those forces into your spring equations to solve for XA and XB. And then plug those in to the angle in order to solve for theta as your final answer. Now the reason this is kind of strange is because you are initially assuming that theta is approximately zero in order to solve for itself at the end of the problem. So if theta turns out to be a small number, then this approximation will probably get you pretty close to the correct answer. But if you're interested in solving for this exactly, you're essentially using five equations and five unknowns. Number one is your moment, number two is your y direction, three is and four are your elongation equations, and number five from the triangle for theta. So your first step would be to combine equations three, four, and five into this one equation and I'll call that here equation 3b. So then now you have three equations and three unknowns. Definitely the most complex problem we looked at today. If you're interested in watching more statics videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. I also publish videos in thermodynamics and fluid mechanics this semester. Next semester, I'll be publishing mechanics and materials, dynamics, and also AutoCAD and Inventor. If you wanna watch more videos right now, YouTube's gonna put some recommended videos on the screen for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.